Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. So if you're new here, please press that like button and subscribe to the channel. It'll help me out a lot so I can just keep making videos for you guys. So in this video, I'm going to be building a gem. And more specifically, I'm going to be building a gem that's going to help a ton of different companies, even me with my own apps. So this is going to be a gem that's going to analyze audio files and then return the key of the audio and also the BPM. So if you're not familiar with music, you probably don't understand what those mean, but the key is just, it means that the pitch and like, you know how songs are in different keys. So there's like minor songs are sad, major songs are happy. And you might not know that either if you don't make music, but if you do make music, you would kind of understand like getting the key right is important. And then the BPM is just the beats per minute. So that's how fast the song is. So something like a dance song where it's going like, don't, 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 don't that's pretty fast BPM like that's that's gonna be a higher BPM compared to like a jazz song or more relaxed song that might just I mean jazz songs can get crazy hey I'm not saying anything about that I'm just saying like uh, let's say just like an old country song an old slow down chill out song the BPM will be very slow got it so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna build a gem cuz oh here's the biggest thing there's not a single gem out there that I could find that allows you to return the key or the BPM. What they do have, they have an audio analyzer class that comes with Rails. So this is part of Active Storage. So every time you upload a file using Active Storage, it's gonna analyze the audios and it's gonna return some metadata. So the metadata is actually cool, but you'll see that the only data that it returns is the duration, the bit rate, which bit rate is cool, sample rate. They don't have any sort of code for key or BPM. Now the reason being, they use this analyzer FFmpeg, which while it's useful, it only returns a certain amount of information about an audio file. So stuff like the duration, the bit rate, sample rate. It doesn't have any sort of way to process audio files and figure out the key and detect the key or the BPM. Well, FFmpeg is cool for encoding audios. It does not have the complex code to be able to go through the whole song and figure out a key and BPM. Now you know what does some other libraries that are not included in Ruby that don't have a port over to Ruby. So that's why I'm going to be building a gem, a nice little gem that's going to return the key and the BPM. FMPEG is not going to work. Now you know what it will. This Python project called Librosa. So that's what we're going to be using. So Librosa is pretty cool. Uh, just basically allows you to I don't even know. I'm going to have to just read it. Oh, music and audio analysis. So even though FFmpeg had that analysis, it didn't have as complex as this one, which uh, I guess Librosa has more of those. So if we look over your beat and tempo, you can easily get the beat and tempo. Here. And I actually have some code I, I had earlier. Analysis.py inside of here. It's just a little bit of Python code. All right, let's get started and build this gem. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a folder for our gem. So we might as well just open up our code editor. So I'm using Visual Studio for my code editor. Now that we're in here, we're just going to go up here to the top file and then click open folder. And then now we're going to have to create a new folder for our gem. I'm just going to do it right here. Call this actually, I don't even know what I'm going to call it. Maybe just like audio analysis gem something like that. All right, and then we can just click that, open it. And this is where we're gonna have all of our code for our gem. So for creating a gem, there's just a few files. So there's gonna be a gem spec file, which would have the same name as our gem. So I can just create that now. Create an audio analysis. Oh, let's just leave it at that. And then we'll call it dot gem spec. Now inside of here is where you add all of your configuration. So inside of the gem spec file, this is what your gem spec would look like. Now this is just the example code they show on the documentation for creating a new gem. So we're gonna have to actually update this uh, for our gem. So I was gonna call this audio analysis, and then have like a summary, which just summarize your gem. Get the BPM and key, any audio file. And then the description, I think it's supposed to be a longer sort of description but i'm just going to put the same thing for now and then authors this is where you put your name just to get credit for creating the gem 
So I'll just say Indigo, Indigo Tech Tutorials. Um, and then the email would be the email of anybody to contact about the gem. I'm just going to put in basically just a fake email, but I might get to this later. All right, the next part is s.files. So these are all the files that are going to be included in the gem. So whenever somebody adds your gem to their app, uh, it's going to include all of these files. So all of the code that we're going to use, we're going to need to include it. So actually right now it's just going to uh, this ola.rb. So we could change this to our new file that we're going to create. And also you see the lib folder. So this is the folder that all gems will have. And that's where you put all of your Ruby code that's going to get included. All right. So let's just change this to audio analysis.rb. And that's going to be the class. Or that's going to be the Ruby file that's going to hold all of our code. So I can go create a new file. Actually, we have to create a folder. We have to create the lib folder. So I'll just create a lib folder. And then inside of here, I'll create a new file, which would be audio analysis.rb. And inside of audio analysis.rb, I'm going to do a class audio analysis. All right, perfect. And now we have this audio analysis class. And then inside of here, I would do some methods that will make it easy to get. Um, the key and the BPM. So let's start with the BPM because I already did that and you saw that at the beginning of this video. So I'm just going to create a class method. So that would look like this. It's a def self dot uh, find BPM. And this is going to expect an audio. And then right here is where we put the code to get this. Now, if you remember from earlier, so I'm going to open up the code. Uh, if you remember from earlier, it, we were using a Python library. So inside here, we're using Librosa. Now you might be confused. How are we going to use Python inside of Ruby? Well, actually, this happens all the time. So like I said, if you can't find your library that you're looking for in Ruby, uh, you probably are going to have to rely on another language. So people do this all the time in large apps. And the way that you do this is there's actually a few ways in Ruby. But you're just going to execute a command that'll run just like any other commands in the terminal. Now what that looks like in Rails is there's this method called system where we could put anything in as a string and then it would run it. So if we want to say like ls, if you're familiar with ls, it just means print all the files. Uh, this would actually do that. <laughs> now if you want me to show you, uh, we should be able to, hmm, how are we going to do this? Well, let's go in the terminal and then we'll open up that code. So I'll go to I'm probably going to have to do with strings around it. Analysis gem. Right, and then go to the lib folder. And I could just do... Actually, I think I did this before. We can open up IRP with this file or something. Uh, well, that didn't work as expected. All right, there we go. I think this did work, but it couldn't find the file because that we have to use dot slash. All right, so now we opened up a Ruby console and now we can actually use this class. And if we wanted to do that method, find BPM, we'll see what happens. So it looks like, oh, wrong number of arguments. We're just gonna put in something, okay. something. And then you'll see it actually returned this file because that's what the ls command does. See if, actually, if we wanted to just exit out into the ls here, you'll see that it returns the same output. All right, so now how would we get this to, to run Python code? Well, actually, it's easier than you think. We just create, we basically take this analysis.py file and bring it over into our gem. So I'm just gonna do this again, analysis.py. And you know, we can just bring all of this code here. One thing is going to be the audio file. We're gonna have to find a way to pass this in, uh, which might be more tricky, but I'll show you how we would uh, hypothetically run this. So we just say Python 3 and then maybe dot slash audio analysis. Oh wait, I was doing the wrong path. Analysis.py. Well, in its shortest form, it should just be like this. Python 3 analysis.py. Start off, why don't we just uh, support like a local file path first? Or let's just say file path make it simple and easy to realize what we're trying to pass in. Okay. And then inside of our analysis.py, 
to access that argument. First, we're going to have to import sys at the top. And then uh, there's this thing right here, sys.argv, where we're able to capture a different arg at a certain spot. So we're just going to get the first arg. And then now we have argument here, which I guess I just say audio file, right? Now, if we could check if audio file, I don't even know how to check this in Python actually. Oh, I think that's what this part was about. So if length, so we actually would put this before, let's say if the length of the args is not equal to two, then we'll just give them a thing because Yes, because there's going to be the first argument, which would be right here, the file path, and the second would be like the arg that we're trying to pass in. So let's try to run this without, let's just try to, I guess we can just try to do this right in the console, python3 analysis pi, and you'll see, well, it doesn't really say like an error, um, it just said whatever was in this usage, so I can say like, I don't even know. I'm just trying to tell them like, you have to pass in a file path. <laughs> Let's see what happens. So yeah, we get this message now. You have to pass in a file path. Uh, like use it like this, basically. I don't know if the first message was cleaner. It doesn't really matter to me. Okay, so now inside of here, we would just run basically that same thing we did in the console. Would be like this then the analysis would run uh, we would load up the file and then we get the tempo and then we would print this so capturing the the output of this command is going to be another trick that we're going to figure out but let's just see does this work does this work right now so to test it out we're going to need an audio file so I don't really know how we're going to be able to do this because, well, this is in Linux. So I'm probably just going to drag in. How about we create a new folder? Uh, not even in lib. We'll just put it outside of lib and we'll call it like test. And then we could drop all of our test audios in here. So I do have tons of audios. Uh, let me just pull in one. audio.wave so then if we're gonna run it it should be uh, pretty self-explanatory uh, so let's go into the console and let's do our IRB we'll open up the Ruby shell oh looks like we're gonna error oh, I somehow deleted the last end that's weird let's try this again all right so we're in the audio analysis now we can go off this audio analysis class oh let's say let's see what happens if we do find BPM with nothing. Oh, we get wrong arguments, but that's not even from Python, that's from Ruby. All right, let's pass it test slash audio dot wave. Let's see what happens. It says, okay, no such file, fair, fair, fair. Maybe for to do dot dot slash, because if you see where the audio analysis was located, it's in the lib folder. Possibly we need dot dot slash. Yep, and just like that, we actually have a gem which returns the BPM, right? Now, if we're going to say BPM equals this, does that actually save it? No, it just saves true. So that's the next part that we need to tackle. Now, I'm pretty sure in Ruby, uh, we can just change this to use backticks. That's another way to do a command line script. And then the cool thing with backticks is you're able to store the output in a variable. Uh, so let's say if we're going to do something like this, we could actually have the whole method just run this code and then by default in Ruby, it would return the output of whatever the last thing in your method is. So this should return it and then, yeah, let's let's try that out. 
So I'll go reload this. And then let's just try to get the BPM from this. And see what happens. So now when I say BPM, oh, we actually get it. Look at that. Now, uh, this estimated BPM part is just from uh, in here, just for testing, I guess. So we might want to get rid of this. Print. Uh, we, we could actually get rid of the F string. So F string is just the same as interpolating in Ruby. If we just do this, print the tempo out. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Do the same thing. BPM equals this. Mm. All right, cool. So actually, we did work. The one thing I don't like, I don't like the new line. Let me try to get rid of that. Okay, I just learned something interesting. So apparently, in Python, you can use the end parameter to choose whatever gets added to the end of the line. Interesting. <laughs> Oh, that'll fix our problem. We get the BPM from this. And then just like that, we have the BPM. Now, one thing is uh, the string. We might actually want to convert this to a number. So we could do this from our gem. So why don't we just get this BPM equals this. And then we'll just say BPM to float. So a floating number would mean that it includes all the decimal spaces too. And now let's take a look at what that returns. Let me try to zoom in here. All right, so now we have BPM, and it's an actual floating number, which is very, very cool. I don't know if we want to round it. We might or we might not want to. You know, this is probably fine. 123, but this is really exciting. Wow. I can't believe I just did this. All right, so one thing to realize, though, you're going to need to have Python 3 installed, and... I'm pretty sure we're also going to need Liberosa, which I had to install with pip. Yeah, so... Uh, Liberosa, no, it's not here. So we're going to also have to think about how we can include the Python packages that we need, like Liberosa, which is not included in Python, because I had to use pip3. So if I do pip3, uh, can we just list it? Let's install packages. Pip3 list. And see, these are all the different packages I have on my computer right now. So some of them are included, but then other ones are definitely not, like the YouTube DL. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a file in here called requirements.txt. Now, if you're not familiar with requirements.txt, it's basically like a gem file in Ruby that just sets all of the dependency you need for the Python package. So to automatically create it, we can actually use this library called piprex, and then we can use it, we can give it our analysis.py, and then it'll tell us all the dependencies we need from this file, which that's exactly what I want to do, and then it'll automatically create that requirements text file for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to cd, or let's go back into the code directory, audio analysis gem, let's just go in the lib to make this easier. First thing we need is pip rex. That's the dependency we're going to be using. So we need to do pip install pip rex. I should be able to run this in the console. All right, it's installing a few things for pip rex. And then the next thing we do is pip rex and we put the path to our file. So that we already know how to get that. All right, so let's take a second. Uh, so it's installing pip rex. Now we'd be able to run pip rex in the console. And. Huh. Well, I forgot to put it in the path. Let's see what the requirements text. What did that generate? Okay, Librosa. So I guess everything did work correctly. I didn't even need to give it uh, like the direct path as long as you run it inside of the same folder. It was able to find the Python file and just see that we need Librosa. Okay, cool. And now that we have requirements.txt, what would happen is we want to install this every time. Well, for now we can just do something like this pip install requirements.txt. I'm not really sure if there's a better way to do this, but this is probably the command that I'll run. And now let's test this out. Go back to the console. And let's do that thing where we open up the file in IRB. All right, now we have audio analysis, find BPM. Now I'm going to give it the path to that audio file. Actually, I should already have this. Okay, right here. Yeah, we already have this command. Let's run it, let's see what happens. 
All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to add the method to find the key of the audio. This would be pretty similar. Actually, find key, we expect the file path, and then we would also do the pip install requirements. And then we could do this, except now we're trying to get the key. Now, we're going to need some way to specify this difference. So maybe I'll change this to like two different Python files. Uh, I think that would be fine with me. So this could be like BPM analysis, and then this could be key analysis. So I'll go ahead and rename this one, BPM analysis, and then I'll create a new file called eanalysis.py, and then this is where our key analysis code would be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna They'll import Librosa. We're also going to import NumPy, which is a Python library for interacting with audio files. Now, I'm actually I'm looking at this article. So shout out this guy who made this article. Hopefully it works. David Oloyo, detecting musical keys. So I'm just doing this. Oh, and we also want the code to get the argument. So let's go back here. Oh, let's grab this piece of code right here, and we're also going to need to import this. Drop that up at the top. All right, now we have the audio file is right here. Now we're gonna load it. It's essentially the same as the other file where we load it. And then we get the, the Y and the sample rate. I think Y is just, I don't know what Y is. I'm pretty sure it's just like the audio itself. And sample rate would just be the number. All right, so now chromogram. I honestly don't even know. <laughs> Fourier, I've heard of something about Fourier has something to do with music. Fourier, a French mathematician and physicist. He definitely was not on a Python. I mean, look at him, bro. He does look like he likes, he would like uh, Python, you know what I mean? <clears throat> Anyways, I don't know what chromogram means. Mean chroma, I have no idea. does it mean what are chromogram chroma based features which are also referred to as pitch class profiles are a powerful tool for analyzing music which whose pitch can be meaningfully categorized often in the 12 categories ah because this is just one scale this standard scale of like 12 notes that we use uh, it's different all over the world actually so C to B I mean it's not really C it's more like C to G all over the world, they don't use this. So that's kind of like, yeah. <laughs> I only know these notes. So we're going to use this chroma key. But apparently, they call it chroma, which just basically means the pitch. Interesting. Now we have to find the key by selecting the maximum chroma feature. Mean chroma. We get the chronogram. Then we get the mean chroma. Oh, and an argmax. Then we can just estimate the key. Chroma two key. Take the key. <laughs> Interesting. We actually can test this too, because I'm a musician, so I could actually do like an audio that we know the key and we know the BPM. I probably will do that. And you guys can also see my music skills a little bit. All right, so key analysis. <laughs> Now let's go back to our audio analysis class and yeah, key analysis, same basically thing. And then, well, we actually don't even need to save it. We can just let it return this because the key, yeah, that should be fine. All right. Now the fun part, let's go and test it. We're going to go, we're going to open and back up our audio analysis. We're going to do this code, except we're instead of find BPM, we find key. Drum roll, please. Detected key B. So it's working. Now, I don't know if it's completely accurate, but it is working. So now I just want to change it so that uh, it's like the same as the other one where it just returns only the value that we want. So I'm going to get rid of this first part. And we're also going to add that end parameter. We're going to set it to nothing. So it's just like an empty string. And if we wanted to, can we just reload? We should be able to just reload in the console instead of 
doing it wrong. But I don't know. Maybe not. I think reload might be a Rails thing. All right, so now we get the key. Just like that, we get V. Now, you know what? I feel like a lot of times we might just do like both of them too. So we might have a separate method called like analyze. All right, and then it's gonna still do the pip install, but then it's gonna get the BPM. It's gonna get the key. And then it's just gonna return it in a nice formatted object like this. I really like that. So let's go in here. Let's just call it like data equals volume analysis dot analyze. And we have to give it the path, which we already have it up here. And we're gonna go ahead and run it. And look at what we got back. We got the BPM and the key. This is exactly what I needed for my other app. I'm about to use this gem right away. So let's go ahead and, like I'm happy with this. Let's go ahead and just build it and then try to put it into our other gem. So that brings us to the next step. To build the gem, we just run gem build. And oh, let me get out of the lib folder. Oh, another thing actually real quick. Inside the gem spec, we need to update the files that we're including. Because right now we're just including lib audio analysis. Uh, so let's just go ahead and include everything inside of lib. So let's just say lib, and then we'll do the wildcard, which should just include everything. All right, and now that we're just in the main folder, what we're gonna do to get this gem set up is we're gonna run gem build, and we'll pass in the gem spec. I'm gonna run gem build, it looks like there's an issue. Oh, lib are not files. Ooh, I think I ran into this before. Hmm. So I think what we can do is say dir.glob. And then this should actually return an array of all of the files. So let's see, let's try to gem build. Hey, look at that, it worked. So now we have our first version. And now to actually release this, we just do gem push. But first you're gonna need to sign in. So if you don't have an account uh, for Ruby gems, that's where all of the gems get published to. But also let's see, is there already an audio analysis gem? No way there's not. No way there's not, that's crazy. So we're actually filling the gap, like a huge gap. All right, so yeah, if you don't have your uh, Ruby gem account, it's pretty easy. Just go ahead and, oh, it doesn't look like there's an option. Oh, yeah, see, so sign out. Usually it would say sign in. Sign in, set up your account. And then right here in console, we'll do gem sign in, which I think for us, we might already be signed in, so it didn't do anything. All right. Yeah, sign in. Oh, we could gem sign out, but I don't, I don't really wanna do that. Okay, so I'm already in. So then to push our gem, just say gem push. And then, oh, okay. so when we did gem build, it created this file, which is like a compiled version of our gem. So we just have to push that. We push our gem, and then we're pushing it, successfully registered, and now we have the gem set up. So this is awesome. So what I'm gonna do to test this out is, first let's delete uh, Librosa. We'll do pip uninstall. Rosa. Yes. Now this is just so we can test it because if it's not working, then it would throw an error. You know what I mean? Like if if the pip install requirements to get the Librosa dependency is not working, now we can actually test it before you know lots of people start using it. So we're gonna go over to the app that I'm actually doing, which is a YouTube to MP3 site. Oh, I don't need to start the server. We're actually just gonna open the code. So now that I'm in my Rails app that I want to add the gem to, I'm going to do bundle add audio analysis. Now we're going to get the audio analysis gem. Look at that installing. It's the first version. And now to actually use it, oh, let's go ahead and open the code up. Code 
dash remote and then well actually why don't we just go rail siege to test it out real quick audio analysis we do have the class and then if we want to say like find the bpm all right so uh the thing is we don't have any files so we might actually just want to test this out in like the real let me build the, the code so basically what this app does is it allows you to download the audio for a YouTube video. So if we go to localhost, just like this, you enter any YouTube link. Let's go in here. Let's say we just find like a, just something that we like, you know. And obviously, you can't use this for copyright, so that's one thing. Uh, downloading copyrighted material is not allowed, so that's not what I'm doing at all. All right, so then when you enter the song link, you press start download. It says, hold on, we're downloading. It goes ahead and it downloads the file. And then it just puts it right here. It says your file has been downloaded. Also, I'm planning on making a video on how to build your own site like this. So if you're excited about learning how to do this, it's literally just a, a simple package here. So I'll give you a preview. It's just a package called YTDLP. It lets you uh, like download the video from tons of sites, tons of sites. So YouTube, SoundCloud, TikTok, just so many. So it's pretty dope. Uh, yeah, anyways, what we're gonna do is, so see on that download page, I had a lot of requests from users to add the key in the BPM right under. So like it's a, your file has been downloaded successfully and underneath it might say like the key, the BPM and everything. So now to do that, we're gonna use this gem which before there was no option, there's no solution. So I was like, what the heck, how do I do this? And this is the way with this gem. All right, so let's figure out, I think we're doing it in the jobs, that's where we're broadcasting. So we have a YouTube download job. Yep, right here. So we do the download. And then if the download is successful, we just broadcast it to here. And then what I'm gonna do is probably after we broadcast the download, uh, we could have like, you know what we'll have is on the download page, on this one, just go to download. Or wait, what's the partial download success? So we're gonna go to this view, download success. And at the bottom, let's just do a div ID is like key BPM. Let's say like loading the key and BPM. Because you saw how it took like a few seconds. I don't want to slow down the request at all uh, with this. I want to do it asynchronous. So it first give you the download. You know, say loading the key in BPM, and then once that's successful, we would broadcast that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this right here. So that would look like we'd use the audio analysis class, and we'll just analyze the file. So to get that file path, it's actually, since we didn't handle active storage attachments in the gem, I'm just going to quickly do it by hand. So that would look is the download.file. We're going to have to actually download it again although hmm that's a question maybe we shouldn't maybe we should analyze it inside of the YouTube download even though that would slow down the process but the problem is downloading the file again just doesn't make any sense because here we already have it downloaded see we actually have like the file path and we're doing file to open file path like see this is already yeah, I want to find a better way. So why don't we just audio and analyze here? We'll say we can call this like I guess key BPM. We're gonna analyze it. We're gonna pass in the file name. Actually, not the file name. The file path. And then let's just update. Uh, should be fine to just go on the download model. So right now we see we have a download model. We're gonna need to add some fields to that. So I'll go in the console and I'll run real to migration. They add audio fields to download. Now we're gonna have a key and a BPM. Now remember how BPM was like a a floating point number. Maybe we can do that. We'll set it to float. I think that should be fine. And then we could just cat this to see what that returned. All right, so that looked good. We have a string, we have a float. 
Wait, this money rate. Perfect. Everything looks good there. I'll just restart the server. And then we'll go back into our YouTube download class. So now that we would have the audio data, if you could just let's see, download the update. Yeah, just literally pass an audio data because it's already formatted as that object that we want it. So this would work. And then I guess uh, we wouldn't even need this, you know, loading the key in BPM because now we are doing it at the same time. Even though I said I didn't want to do that, it actually would be faster than... It just doesn't make sense to download the file, have it stored, delete it, and then re-download it here just to analyze, you know, to save like two seconds. I don't know. Maybe it does. So we'll, we'll think about that in a second. But I think just having this audio data is awesome. So then right down here, uh, let's just simply get the key, get the key, download the key. And we could do the same for BPM. Obviously, I'll probably style it more eventually. But let's take a look and see if this even works at all, because I have no idea. I'm just hoping for the best, because we haven't even got to test our gem yet. Okay, so we, now we need a YouTube link. For some reason, I don't have the links saved anymore. You know, I have a on my channel. This is not my channel. This is just a channel where I do visuals. But this is a pretty good song, so I'll use this. Just hold on, we're downloading. Now we can look in here. I mean, okay, it looks like everything's working. <gasps> oh no. This key BPM, but I don't see him. It wasn't able to set it. Is there any errors in here about. Oh, no such file directory requirements.txt. And there's also a syntax error. That's crazy. All right, let's get out of here. I think we can actually open the gem by doing gem open. Audio analysis. Oh, I guess I do trust them. Inside fear. Wait, there is a requirements.txt. The question is when it runs this audio analysis, hmm, where, like, where does it think it is? Actually, yeah, actually, um, hmm, I have to say like lib slash requirements. So I think it would get stored in the lib folder. And then we might actually want to namespace this too, because I'm pretty sure how gems work is they kind of like merge with your local lib folder. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure, pretty sure. So we might want to just add like another folder for the, the Python specific code. But I think maybe doing this lib slash requirements.txt might fix the issue. So now we'd actually have to, first of all, let's go back to that gem. Python audio analysis. Oh, wait, that's not the gem. No. LS audio analysis gem. Here we go. We're going to see the answer there. All right, and then, uh, well, I don't really have like a great way to test it. I could test it again with that files, but I just don't know if it's going to work. So let's just push the new code. So what we're going to do to push our code actually is we have to get out of here. We're going to need to open up our gem. We need to update the version before we push anything. So inside of the lib folder, oh, I think I was changing the wrong code too. I was changing the gem open code. Uh, so let's quickly we'll add our lib slash requirements text, which hopefully will make sure that it looks in the right place. Okay, and then now to push our new gem version, whenever you add new gem versions, you need to update the version. See how this is like audio analysis, zero, zero, zero. All we need to do is go into the gem spec, change this to the zero, zero, one. And then we're good to build the gem again. Go back into console, we can run gem build and pass in the gem spec file. This builds our new version like this. And then we can go ahead and push it. 
doing gem push and passing in that new build file. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into my app. <laughs> uh, I think we can do like the specific version bundle install. Oh, bundle add. Oh, look. Actually, in our code, see, like, in the, I think that's in the lock file, maybe. I don't know. Oh, let's open it up. With dash remote. We're going to have to specify the new version. So in gem file. Yeah, look, it's actually saying, like, explicitly use this version. So we have to increment this to the one. And then let's run bundle. Every time you change the gem file, you need to run bundle. Wait, what? Oh, we never did gem push. LOL. Hold up. Uh, let's go over to LOL. I can't believe it said LOL out loud. Let's go back to the audio analysis gem. We did gem build, but we never did gem push. That's the last step. So push our new version. Wait, wait, it says it was already pushed. No, I'm going crazy now. Okay. Go back into our YouTube MP3. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove the gem file lock for one. So gem file lock is what like stores all of the current versions. And also I'm just gonna delete this, you know? So now I just wanted to get whatever's the newest version of audio analysis. And then I'll run bundle. Okay, so let's see. Hey, so right, first off, it, it fetched the right version, 001. Perfect. I'll do bin slash dev. And just hope that that code now works a little bit differently. All right, so we're, <laughs> ah, we're going to need a new audio. Or not, it doesn't have to be audio. It could be anything, right? It's just any sort of video. I don't, know. I don't want to get anything too long so that it like takes forever. Let me just go take that. Start the download and we'll see what's happening in the background. Uh, so it's kind of just like working, working, working. Oh, key BPM, it's not coming through. Let's look in the console. Is there anything that looks wrong? Oh, well, no such file lib slash requirements.txt. Oh, that's, and then also can open file, Python 3 can open file, BPM analysis.py. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, that makes sense. If we go in here, lib folder, see like there's nothing in our lib folder, but I'm pretty sure that, pretty sure it should also include this file. So I'm not sure why. It's not doing what I want it to. I'm gonna have to quickly say that they like when I show the debugging process. This is what I'm doing right now. Parency installation. Uh, oh, yeah, try to give me like a bunch of more helpers to make my gem better. Rescuing of errors. Okay. What we're going to do is I want to see. <laughs> Bruh. Mm, I don't throw all that. Come on, man. Yeah, I just wanted something. You didn't even give me a chance to ask you. So. I run this in the app. Get. Uh, file not found error. And the Python file. Correct. See, the problem is it just gives me like a generic ass answer. Just like, just make sure that everything's all right. You know, check this, this, this. Bruh. No, this, none of this helps. Because they don't know what I'm talking about. So that's why I don't trust ChatGPT. Like a lot of times Stack Overflow is way better than ChatGPT. Because you can ask a specific question. Or like somebody else will have the same question already asked.
already answered. You get there, boom, it's like, damn, that's relatable. Which at GBT, they just, they try to act like they know everything, but like, yeah, it's really hard to get the specifics out of it. Unless you want to keep talking to it, but it, it makes me mad, boy. Alright, so, custom Ruby gem found. Uh, this is such annoying. Like, I don't want to even, I want to kind of take a break, too. Alright, the question is, this obviously didn't help. How do we get the audio analysis class uh, to know about these files? See, that's kind of the trick now. Maybe I will create another folder. Let's try that. Let's try the folder approach. So let's just say like Python analysis. That'll be the folder name. All right, I'll move this in. BPM analysis, we'll move key analysis. We'll also move requirements.txt. All right, and then inside of here, we could just update all of these to basically go. Oh, yeah, I don't even know. It's like maybe the lib slash Python analysis slash this. But then the question is where is the current working directory of this class? Would it just be wherever you call it from? Could not open requirements of file. Can open file. Well, actually, this kind of gives us a hint right here. Can open file. And look, it's going off like the main thing. So obviously, that's not where we're storing it. We're storing it inside of our gem in the lib folder. So the question is, how do we access that? I'm guessing it's just lib slash this. Oh, so I guess also we'd have to pass it on on our file pass. So I'll just grab this put it here. BPM analysis, we'll put it on the requirements. Key analysis. All these places. All right, now does this work better? Well, we're gonna have to figure that out. So to do that, uh, let's just go back into the audio analysis gem. Right, build a new version. Oh, so quickly before we build a new version, always make sure to increment, which increment just means plus one, the version. So we're gonna do gem build, pass in the gem spec, and it'll know about the new version. Let's see, we got our new version. And I'm just gonna push this up. CD out of this. We'll go back into our the pre app. And we're gonna again, we're gonna remove the gem file lock and just run bundle. It should fetch the new version. Uh, weird, I actually didn't see anything happen. Try it again. The gem file lock, ls. There's no gem file lock. I'm just confused why I didn't see any, any output on the console. Oh, at least we know that it got the right version now. Because we started at 0, 0, 0, then we went to 1, then we went to 2 right now. All right. Now let's see, did this make any difference? Any difference. So I'll just use this, guys, because I have them out. Now let's see. Well, the funny thing is, BPM and key is more for music, so <laughs> it is kind of silly that I'm passing a whole YouTube video. All right, what's the error? Ah, Python 3 can't open file, and it cannot open requirements file. No such file directory lib. Interesting. So see, it, it like doesn't know where to find it. Which is a good point. And we're really gonna have to think like, how do we, how do we access files? How to access included files in GAM. Existing files packaged into a gem. Patch. 
to resources. You can add arbitrary paths and then walk the load path to find resources. Wait, what does that mean? If you have resources in other directories in lib. Okay. Car paths. This is important. It specifies which files. So yeah, Durglob, that's what I did. Durglob actually works. Um, require. So this is like to require other things. Okay, that's fair. Gem. Oh, is it gem data dir? I'm confused. It's kind of interesting. Gem data dir. The path to the data directory specified by the gem name. What does that mean? Can you give an example of gem data dir? <laughs> Please, can somebody give me an example? I'm so confused. Also, I didn't know there's a whole gem class that you can interact with. If we go back into our gem code, oh, I guess there is a gem class right here. All right, so maybe inside of here, we need to think like, oh, inside of audio analysis, we need, before all of this, we need the, the path to the gem itself. I don't know where does that get stored. I think it can just get stored like in your operating system somewhere. It's kind of interesting. Oh, and someone said, please use gem data dir for finding the correct path. <sighs> okay. There has to be a way to test this though. Test the Ruby gem. I know there is, uh, but let's just see. Apparently gem data dir. Although what does this return? Oh, we have to pass in the gem name. The path to the data directory specified by the gem name. All right, that's fair. We could call that. Say like gem path equals gem dir data dir audio analysis. And we'd have to put this before, well, before the lib at least. So we go search for that. Add in our gem path. Do a slash. Hopefully we can call it a day. Although gem path. Oh wait, let's do a method called gem path, like a private method. Can you have private class methods? Because I think we're gonna need a class method for this. Since those are used. So like the self, that's what makes it a class method. But can you have a private class method? I've never tried. But I think you can. Alright, so then we just return to data there. Alright. File path. So hope I'm hoping this this actually does look right to me, but in the sort of right way where I'm just hoping that it is right, it could be completely the wrong thing. All right. So now we're gonna have to do the long process, going back into that gem, doing the gem builds. Well, it's not that long. It just can be annoying. I'm gonna push our new version. Push the version. Oh, I said, I accidentally tried to use git. Okay, gem push. Perfect. Now we're going to CD out. We're going to CD into our app. And again, we're going to remove the gem file.lock and run bundle. So when I, re when I remove the gem file lock, it actually should make sure that to install the new version. I'm hoping I actually I didn't see it install so kind of worried. Let's see gemlets local. Oh, that's so much. Okay, let's grep and let's look for analysis. Wait, it only has two, one, and zero. Which why does it have that many anyways? And I thought I got rid of the gem file lock. 
RM gem file lock, LS. There's no gem file lock. Maybe we need to do bundle install. Maybe that was what I was missing. Yeah, it looks like bundle install. And then if we were to do the same gem list. Why do we have so many versions though? I would think that it would just install like the latest version. Audio analysis, it says it only has three. But I'm not really sure. All right, but perfect. Now we do have the new version. We're gonna restart. Let's try this out. Actually, let's do, let's look up non-copyright music. Hey, because then it's not against the rules. Although, um, oh sure, let's do this. Upbeat music, it's only two minutes long, perfect. Copy this, go back into our app, and let's test it out. Let's keep the console open so we can look at the logs. Go right away. <laughs> nice big error. So we get undefined method data dir for module gem. Would you look at that? Apparently gem.data dir is not a thing. Huh. It's pretty annoying. Did I spell it wrong or something? I'm so confused. Gem data dir. Is so what the error was uh, undefined method data dir for module gem. Oh, cause it's a module. So we'd actually have to include it to use that. Uh, that's kind of annoying. At least I'm pretty sure. Gem dot data dir. Let's test it out. Let's actually go to Rails and let's try gem dot data dir. Let's see, it doesn't work. What if I was to include gem and then say data dir? Uh, no. No dice. So can we just say gem dot? Let's see what methods you do have. Um, oh. mm, quite a few methods. Data dir just does not happen to be one of them. At least not anymore. So that was not the answer. And I'm getting tired of re-pushing it just to test it. So I'm gonna need to find a way to, to test my gem before I push it. That should actually be easy if we go back to the Ruby gem stocks. Uh, so look like guides, I guess. Make your own gem. Well, actually let's find the one for testing a gem. Writing tests. Testing your gem is extremely important. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let's add some tests. A rake file? We really need a rake file for all this? Alright, let's go ahead and do that. So open up our code of our gem. Get the rake file. Inside of here we have this. Test, run test. I remember I did have a test. <laughs> I just put uh, this audio file. We're not actually gonna include that, I'm pretty sure. So then inside of our test, uh, we'd add something that looks like this. I also don't know why it's in Spanish. Maybe Ruby Gems is a Spanish site. Oh, whoops, I'm in the wrong code. So let's go back in here, let's go in the test folder, we'll create a new file. Call this my audio analysis test.rb. Analysis. I see it's requiring Ola. Interesting. So does that already? It's already able to pull that. All right, but for us it would be audio analysis. I require this. Audio analysis. And instead of here, uh, well, these are all the methods I would run. So the first thing, let's just like test. Um, question we can't even we can't even test it like this that's the thing because it just wouldn't work the same I mean actually maybe it would maybe it would so we do have a test file let's just 
they're equal. We have to assert something. So let's do audio analysis find BPM. And we'll pass in dot slash audio dot wave. And we're expected to return B, because remember that's what we got earlier. So that should actually be good enough. And then let's change this test English hello. <laughs> Test uh, find BPM. Just as simple as that. And then to run it, I think all we do is just rake file. Rake. Maybe automatically. I think you just say Rails too. Alright. Uh, oh, I'm inside of the wrong folder, of course. I really should just have two windows open at this point. Ah. Need to go back to our audio analysis gem. All right, and then we're gonna run rake. We shouldn't be able to run Rails. Oh, let's run Rails tests. Oh, that didn't work. Wait, it's not really working. Oh, rake. <laughs> you can run rake test. Rake test, but nothing happened. Rake file. Bin slash older. Wait, why do we have a bin? Executable. Oh, the executable is just so you can use it, uh, like inside of. Uh, yeah, to the past. That is in the rake. Now that is cool. So if you wanted to say like be able to use it out here like audio analysis outside that's so cool uh we don't need to do that so that's what rake does apparently bin slash ola prior ola am i missing something though mini test auto run huh Audio analysis test. Everything looks right to me. Oh wait, do we need to put test first? Test, test Ola, and then the class was Ola test. Why is it backwards? No, this is not making sense to me. I know Spanish stuff is backwards, but you have to put test first. Test. Well, it's probably about the rake file, right? The rake file probably had Oh, well, no, we're just adding test. And we're running test, test default test. Like, I have no idea. Let's run right test. Hey, I guess it was you have to just put test first. Why? And is that the same in a Rails app? Let's go in here. No, look, it's backwards. Yeah, I have no idea. Oh, maybe it's just Rails test helper. That's what kind of changes the syntax. Well, why? Why is it flipped? I don't know. But this works too. Uh, we're actually are getting an issue. I'm saying. Undivided <laughs> the, the data there. Perfect. So we can test it out. Let's go in here. Okay, what happens? Let's just get rid of the gem path entirely. Let's get rid of this whole thing. Let's run the test again. Wait, expected zero actual B. Oh, whoops. Let's go back to... First, let's make sure everything looks right. So find BPM, it should actually be doing it right. BPM analysis of the file path. Um, but something must be going wrong. Find BPM, no, that actually looks right. So I guess the, the one you're expecting should go first. And then the one you're testing should go second. I don't think it really matters. Oh, but we're doing fine BPM. <laughs> Why am I trying to test it with B? You know, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, we meant to do fine key. Right test, actual none. So there is an issue inside of here. Uh, it might be, be actually because of the file path, though. All 
Right, although relative to us, this should work. But I'm wondering if the working directory of the audio analysis is actually like the main folder. So I it's really hard to tell. Or what if we're what if it's just thinking that's inside the lib? So we actually need to say like dot dot slash test slash this. Alright, let's try that out. Break test. Well Oh and we're actually getting an error up here. Cannot open file. Oh perfect. So actually I don't even think it was us. All right. See, it's not talking about us. It's just saying like could not open. It's giving us the same error we get in our app, which is good. I mean, it's not good, but uh, let's try to delete all of this. Let's delete the lib part. So we're just going to do Python analysis and then try to access the file. Let's try that out. Break test. Nope, no such file or directory. Right here it says cannot open file. So this is actually a hint because it's showing us what it's trying to open. Python, oh, okay. So it actually does need the lib folder too. I just think because of the because we had a slash in front of it, it was kind of messing up. Oh, uh, this is annoying. All right. Let's try it one more time. Oh, well, it's going slower, so I think it is working. Ah, oh, but we're getting some errors now. Python file. Interesting. Um, I'm guessing why it broke is because the file path that might not have been able to find this. <clears throat> so file path equals third dot glob. Pass in this file path. And I'll just put out real quick. I want to see what that returns because I don't even know what that's going to return. Return it. Uh, file path is <laughs> nothing. So dir.glob did not do its job. And again. File path is none. Okay, interesting. So I'm wondering, I think when we run this test, it's actually like in the main level. So we might need to say test slash audio waves. Let's try that out. Whoops. Wait, what's that? Rig test. All right, file path. Yep, it was able to find it. Okay. And then see how our gem reacts. It actually worked. All right, so I don't even think we need the dirt glob thing. Uh, we just need to make sure it's that's oh well not in the comment right here on file path you just have to make sure that it's able to find it and then this should work also without dirt glob yep pass the test perfectly so then the question is uh, well we already tried this in our app and it didn't work um uh, i'll try it one more time though just because it worked in our test so let's increment the version to four We're going to build this gem spec one more time. And we're going to push the newly created gem file. Pushing our new version. All right, now I'm going to go in. Let's actually create, open up a new tab just so I don't have to keep switching. This is kind of a pain because when I do a new tab, it goes PowerShell. But I actually just want a Ubuntu console and I want to like stick it up here if possible, which Apparently is not that possible. Okay, that's fine. We're just going to have two separate windows. Although I'd love to be able to combine them, but it's okay. So in our YouTube to MP3 app, we're going to again use the gem file.lock bundle install. Download our new version of our gem. Well, I didn't see it install. What the heck? Gem list local yeah, for the analysis. It only has three. So confused. Maybe it takes a second to. Probably takes a second for it to update on the registry. All right. But now we obviously have four. 
I'm gonna go ahead and test this one more time. And just kinda hope that it works. At this point, I don't even know. And okay. You see a lot of stuff is going on. Oh, already. Already. <laughs> Look at these errors. Let's see what it says. Um, well, could not open requirements file. Yeah, it's mostly, it just couldn't find the requirements.txt uh, because it's not here. Inside of this app, actually, if we open up like this Rails app, Inside the lib folder, there's nothing because this is just our regular lib folder. We haven't even added anything in here yet. So the question would be, how can we get this uh, to use the file, the like the path to our gem file to get the requirements of text? And it should actually be a lot easier. I think it's probably a lot easier than I think. Okay, so flash forward, um, you know, you can probably see down, oh wait, I'm blocking the clock. So flash forward some time and apparently this would be the thing gender possibly could be a solution so let's go and try this see if it fits so actually uh, i kind of want to go back to what we had before but i guess we can't so let's just do a private again gem path which i guess is going to say Loaded specs, then you put the name of your gem. So for us, it's audio analysis, gender. And then hopefully we could do something like, you know, pass it in here and then it should work. So I'm just gonna do, okay, how do you do it? I think control D, so you highlight the section, control D. Let's see, now you can actually add codes at all lines at once. So just like that. And then, you know what we can do is actually test this out with our rake. We should be able to. So we'll go back in here. Uh, let's see the into the gem. Let's do rake test. Now undefined method gem dir for nil. <laughs> Which actually, that's not really a bad thing because I think we just don't have the compiled gem yet. So there's not really a way to test this. Right, like we actually don't have a compile gem, so let's just compile this and then, you know, see if this works. Oh, actually, a better idea. Let's go over to our app, open up Rails console, and then test this out before we even try to push it and do all that, because I don't want to waste my time. Okay, so actually, clear this. All right, now let's try to get the gem path inside of here. Now let's see, does this actually work? Gem dirt. So apparently it does. So this is what it returns. A direct path. And then let's say uh, like path equals this. Path plus slash path on analysis. Text. We would have the requirements file and then how do we check file.exist? Let's just see if this exists. It says false. <laughs> Can we dare.glob it? Hmm. Apparently, this. Oh, I want to get inside of it. Oh, oh wait. It has a lib folder. What's inside the lib folder? Uh, oh, <laughs> it's only audio analysis to RV. It's actually, can we just like open this up? I feel like we have to be able to. Let's 
exit out of here. Can we just actually like CD into this? We can. Hey, look at that. Check the lib folder. Okay, in the lib folder, there's only this <laughs> audio analysis at the RB. So obviously, we're doing something wrong in the gem spec, even though we're saying dirt glob. Oh, because we moved everything in the Python analysis. <laughs> so let's do lib. Yeah, well, actually, let's just say audio analysis. That would be right. The exact. And then also lib slash Python analysis. And then maybe we don't even need Python analysis, right? But hopefully this will do it. Now it's update to five. We still aren't really able to tell if this would work, but I think it would from what I just discovered here. I think it would. Let's try it out. Oh, oh actually, I'm going to have to go back to our console and just compile this new gem version. So I'll do that real quick. Okay, so I'm going to take the gem spec. Build this new version of our gem, and then we're gonna push it. All right, cool. We'll be able to get out of here. Go into our Rails app, and then I want to get the new version. Now remember, this kind of took a while, so like we could probably wait a second or two. But I'm gonna remove gem file dot lock, and I'm gonna do a bundle install, and let's see. Let's just make sure that it gets the new version. Okay, so it didn't get the new version, so I'm gonna do it again. All right, there we go. We actually, so I don't know why it takes two times. I actually don't know. But I'm guessing it's more of a time thing. Like we just have to wait until it pops up in the registry. All right, so now we do have uh, this. So I mean, we could even do the rail C. We could try again with that, um, this gender. Take that path, exit out of here, let's cd into it real quick. Just ls, there's a lib folder, go into lib, okay, okay, okay. ls python analysis. Oh, I think there's a typo or something. Yeah, there definitely is. What's this? And it does have everything. All right, so in my best judgment, this should work. In slash dev. I don't know if that's the best thing to say, but from what I can tell, this is more likely to work than it's ever been likely to work in the past. All right, I'm going to go and get some more. Whoops. <laughs> oh, hey, okay, we can't do this actually. I was going to get copyright free, but okay, keep it on the low. Oh, no. So it looks like still it's not working. actually getting this thing syntax error this hmm. so I wonder if that's probably in my gem but I don't even see where we're doing like a, a thing like that except for in my methods but yeah I don't even see any errors so like I just see that that shell script thing okay Let's try to go in the Rails console. And then let's see if we can analyze the file. So first we need a path. So, oh, shoot, I forgot I can't clear this. We should have a path though. Let's exit out of here, quick. Okay, ls temp folder, temp slash audios. We definitely have uh, files here, although it's just a video file. Oh, shoot, it's just a video file. Hmm. All right, let's open up the code. I'll just drag in one real quick. Let me try it out with that. YouTube to MP3. Or actually, shouldn't we have? Wait, I'm saying all of this, but <laughs> look, we have all these download models. I just forgot. So since I am storing it, I check file attached. Yes, it is true. 
So then if I want to just download this, uh, we could do that. So we could say like local file equals, can you just say download? Well, apparently you can. Ooh. The local file is, uh, uh, I think it's like the whole file. <laughs> okay. Apparently, can we just get the file path? Try to check the methods. Ooh, there's a lot of methods. But we can actually grep. Just like the same as console, but in Ruby. Let's look for anything that's like path. File. Um, yeah, I don't see. Maybe we don't want to do it that way. Maybe we want to say Five download dot last dot file dot open. No, no block given, so that needs a block. Download the file. Oh yeah, maybe we just have to like open it and then read it. No, I don't think that's it. Really? Avatar on disk. <laughs> no, I'm so confused. Avatar dot key. Okay. Local file would equal download dot last dot file dot key. Oh, mm, look at that! Apparently. Well, that's just because we're not using AWS or anything. So like by default, Rails will store your stuff on disk. So we actually do have a file we could use. <laughs> um, but this isn't always the case. And then if we wanted to pass in audio analysis, analyze, how about we just keep it simple, find a BPM. Drum roll, it worked. It actually worked. I wonder if it's the analyze feature. No, that works perfectly. Ah, I'm pretty happy with myself. So it looks like it was more like a problem with the, the Ruby code, not the Python code. And not the gem, which means that this gem is working. We have built the gem. We have done it. So all I have to do is just hook it up into the app now and fix those little, you know, rough around the edges spots. So right here. Whoops, let me make sure. I hate all these pop-ups, they're so annoying. Alright, so there's like so many things that could basically go wrong. Oh, so this is we're supposed to have the file path already right here. I try to put it out. File path is file path, right? Although the way that we got it to work was with the active storage. So I wonder, yeah, I don't even know. This should work though. There's no reason why it shouldn't work. All right, let's restart. We're going to start the download. I just want to take a look. Look, the key, is, the key and BPM aren't there. All right, well, since it works so well with the active storage way, why don't we just do it that way? And then it also kind of gives us the improvement of saving some time like we wanted to do earlier. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, take out this code. We don't need that comment anymore. And then what we'll do is we'll do this instead of the in that download model. 
it's not really a model, it's just a class. Uh, we'll do it in the job, so where we wanted to do it before. So after we broadcast the download, we can then do this part. And then again, over in the download success view. So right here, we're just printing it out. Why don't we just say loading the VPN wiki. Or wait, not loading, like analyzing the VPN key. Uh, a little bit spliced here. <laughs> I don't know. I'm already kind of tired. Okay, and then I guess in the download, let's do a partial for VPN. That's where we'll put this code. Download.key, download.bbm. So it's analyzing. That's where we do this code. We're going to analyze the file path. Oops, the file path, let's just use all this since it worked so well. Okay, local file. So this instead of user avatar, it's gonna be our download or app download dot file dot key. Then we would pass this into analyze and then we would update right here. And then finally we would do another broadcast. Uh, so instead of the target being download, it would be key VPM. And instead of partial success, it's VPM. All right, and that looks perfect to me. Now let's test it all together. Let's see what happens. Uh, well, that part worked, the download worked. <laughs> Analyzing looks like it didn't work. Let's see. Zoom in here, undefined local variable or method. Download for an instance. Oh, are you kidding me? Where did I say download? Oh, right here, download update. Whoops. You guys probably caught that before me because I'm just too locked in. All right, let's try this out. So download, and it's like analyzing the BPM key. Should, should work. Oh, I saw something happen. Wait, I saw, I think it actually tried to do it. I wonder. Wait, let's go back to, oh, success. Key BPM, not key and BPM. Quickly fix that. But I think it did work. It definitely worked. What happened? We start the download. Downloads the file, and it's analyzing the BPM key. This is too cool. This is too cool. No, this is actually so awesome. Wow, okay, okay. This is getting really cool now. Because we just built a feature that did not exist before. Like we built a gem that does not exist in all of Ruby. This is one of those magical experiences programmers dream for. So let's try again. We're gonna download our file. Same downloading. All right, then we get the little message analyzing the BPM and key. So it should just be processing in the background. Well, it did. Look, it did broadcast. Target key and BPM. Just did not update it for some reason. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm too tired. Look, I put... <laughs> I put the styling in the ID. <laughs> That's so silly. All right, so if I had not done that, it would have worked. All right, so let's try it out. We're gonna put our song in the converter. So downloading. Okay, download. Now it's gonna analyze the BPM key. And then boom, we got the key and the BPM right there. And then now we definitely wanna could style this up a little bit. You know, put these into two different sections. We already do have them in in P's, but we might want to say like a div around this uh, how we just justify center but then we'll add gap and then we'll just put some styling on these two P's and just like a light gray and a bunch of padding and let's see how that looks. It might look good, it might look bad. Let's see. Analyzing the BPM key. 
key. That looks good to me. So the key is D. The BPM is, well, this number, which <laughs> for a musician, I would not really like this number. So I do want to round it, actually. Definitely musicians would want it rounded. So let's try to round it. Um, we could do it on the Python side, or we could do it on the Ruby side. I don't really know which is better, although doing it on the Python side means we need to redo our gem. So I think I'm going to do it on the Ruby side, because I just don't even want to mess with that anymore. Audio data, we just kind of have to separate this. Actually, you know what? Screw that. Let's just say on the page, let's round it. Round to... Well, how do I... Round up or down into integer Ruby. Or like round a float to an integer is what I mean. Round number to nearest integer. Wait, not in Python. Okay, so apparently it's just round and you put the number. So round download.bpm. And that would actually be perfect. Alright, let's try it out. I'm gonna go ahead, download the file. It's analyzing the BPM and key. So for the people who do want to stay, you don't have to stay. For the people who do want to stay. It's going to go ahead and analyze. Oh, we actually got the error. Apparently. I bet it didn't like the rounds. Wrong number. Given zero, expected one. Seriously? It's saying in the YouTube download job, though. Wait, I'm kind of confused. Uh, wait, what? Alright. I don't know if it... I'm guessing it was the round, because what else could have broken? It had to be the freaking round. Alright, so that looks good. Oh no, we actually do get error. In the YouTube download job, something's going wrong. Oh! Bro, oh, I accidentally got rid of this. <laughs> okay. I got rid of that. Okay, then let's put back the rounds. And then everything should have been good. So we're gonna download. Now it's analyzing. I think I spelled analyzing wrong. Uh, what happened? Nope, another another error. Undefined method rounds. Oh, okay, now here's kind of what I expect. It doesn't know what the heck round is. Because we're in a template. This isn't like, we don't have all the Ruby stuff available right in, the, in this partial. We need to find out the class on that. Oh, of course, it's just off the number. I'm done. That's kind of how Ruby works. It just, you do it off the thing. So we just say pot round. As simple as that. And now if we want to be careful, like let's say the BPM is not defined and we don't want to throw an error. We can use a safety operator so that it would just gracefully say like nil or something. I don't even know. I think it would just say no. For for an average user, they wouldn't know what that means. No, what the heck? Yeah, they wouldn't know. Hey, look at that! And then the key, the VPM is one two three. So let's let's make sure that this is not just hallucinating. Let's go get ourselves some copyright free music and let's try out a different one. Um. Oh yeah, I need a smaller one. Looks like this is all copyright free. Actually, I love copyright free music. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and download it. Hold on, we're downloading your file. All right, file's been downloaded. Now we just need to analyze the BPM key. Hey, look at that. It's A and it's 92 BPM. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. You learned something new. You came along me with me on this journey to build a gem. A gem that never existed. That we could have went for years and years without this gem existing. If it wasn't for me on this particular day building this particular gem.
No. Audio analysis. Gem. The gem that did not exist ever before. Now exists. All right, so I just tried to push it to production. You'll see the URL splash trap on my digital ocean server. And uh, it's not working. So like you remember, uh, we did have some dependencies, pip and Python. So we need to make sure that those are working. Try to say pip3. Oh, it looks like well, automatically we don't have pip3. We do have Python though. All right, so let's quickly install pip. Let's look up install pip on Ubuntu. And then we'll follow whatever guide they have. Oh, wait, okay. So we already have Python. We don't have to worry about that. Python 3. To install the latest version of pip, you have to run this command. Okay, Python 3 pip. Sure. Inside of here, I'll run that. Uh, looks like it's taking a second. Okay, we're just gonna go through here. Oh, okay, so this is just to reload the daemon. I don't even know what to do, so I'm just pressing exit. <laughs> let's clear this out. Now let's see, do we have pip? Do we have pip? Yeah, we have pip and everything, so perfect. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and actually just restart. Uh, so I stop the rail service and restart it. And if you want to know how to deploy an app like this using a DigitalOcean droplet, which this this website only costs me about six dollars a month with the plan that I'm on. So yeah, if you want to know how to do this, also this is super fast, has SSL, and I can have multiple apps on one virtual machine. Anyways, if you want to know how to do this, I have a video for it. So just check out my channel. All right, let's try to let's go get another song. Right, Ooh, music. It's the vibe. What up? We're right, just gonna go in here. Let's take that copyright free song and try to download it. All right, so we got it. We can actually download it. So that part's working. Now, we just need to see is this part working. I don't know, it did take a second, so we can give it a second, but I really wish there was a way to monitor what's happening. If we check the status, like I don't see anything. Oh, so it got the file. Remember how we were trying to access that the direct file, but it's... Oh, okay, it actually did work. Wow, it's just so slow. Also, the styling is messed up, but that's my fault. Um, This is the way I have my app set up. So every time I push new styling, I need to run Rails Assets to compile, which actually I should have that just in my, in my like, rail server start commands i should have this happen first but then when i pre-compile the new assets that would look a little bit different i don't like how slow it is but i just i don't know if there's anything else that we can do at this point except for like have it happen in line but i don't know i think to work right now let's try it again download the song and it's analyzing the bpm and key also, it might have it might be cool just to have another button like get the BPM and key, and then maybe we won't do it for everybody because a lot of people wouldn't even need this. I want to check out my graphs. So actually, one thing, if we look at well CPU usage, that's not too bad, twenty percent CPU. But you can imagine if you had multiple users, how this could spike. So I'm definitely trying to figure out ways to reduce CPU usage because I don't ever want to have spikes like this just because I'm using one of these libraries. Anyways, as you can see, uh, it works. Yeah, it works on production, it works in development, 
My gem works. Audio analysis gem. Now I'm probably gonna make this open source. Right now it's not open source because there's no source available. So I, d I do want to push the source code. And I can include it on this video too. If anybody wants to put any additions. So I'm just gonna go in here. Maybe into it. And actually, I always just start my repos from the GitHub website because it's just easier. I can put the name, which would be audio analysis gem. Then for analyzing audio files to get the P and BPM. Uses, uses <laughs> Python library Libreza. And then definitely putting a, a nice README would be great just so people know what they're getting into. Uh, let's just worry about getting the code up there first. Add dot, we're gonna commit, we're gonna add a message. First commit, we're gonna push. All right, so if you were to say, I just copy what they had there, but then you also have to add all your files and you have to do a commit message before you can push. But then get push, see everything successful. If we reload over here, see all of our codes here. We have an empty readme. We probably wanna update that. And then another thing though is if you want your, so if we go to Ruby Gems right now, uh, and we go to, well, I guess I can just go to my profile, audio analysis. So if we want this to show the source code in like a GitHub link, there's actually a way we can do that. <laughs> oh, it's right here. Wait, no, not that, not that. Mm, all right, I don't even want to look at the docs anymore. I'm so tired. I just want to go and open up one of my other gems. It's a new window, let's open folder. Oh, whoops. Apparently we don't want to do that. Uh, Where's another gem? I don't even know. I don't even know if we have a gem. Now that I think about it. Oh, but I have gems on my profile. Or, wait, I'm missing. I have gems on my GitHub. My profile on GitHub. So if I go over here, go to repositories, it's search by gem. We have a bunch of them. Remember, render build setup gem does have the, the field that I need. So, oh yeah, it's right here. Metadata source code. So just doing the simple thing is gonna actually make our gem open source. And go back to our audio analysis gem. Oh, inside the readme is a good place to add dependencies. So like this, this uh, gem, Python, Python 3, pip, and Librosa. All you need to do is make sure Python 3 and pip are installed. In and it will work and then smiley face nice and smiley right in the gem spec we're going to add this as metadata which is going to allow us to put the github link so let's go and get that github link which is just right here in the url put that here and then now let's increment the version and push this new version of the gem so the gem build the gem spec Now we're gonna go ahead and push this file. And push, pushed it successfully. And then now if we go back here, uh, you'll see that your GitHub repo shows up, which is important for me because I wanna run up my stars on GitHub. I wanna get like tons of stars on my GitHub account. If you look over here, I'm trying to grow it. I don't even know how, I don't even know how to show like how many stars I got. I'm too tired right now, but I definitely want to get like 100,000 stars on this. So, go and download it. Wait. Three. Oh, that's just because I have to push get status. So, I pushed the gem, but let's also. Oh, shoot. Uh, one thing I noticed you're not supposed to push these. 
uh, lol. You're not supposed to push like the gem versions. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but it just kind of like bloats up the, the repo. I'm just going to remove all these. After we push them up to the ruby gems, like we really don't need them in our app anymore. Or, um, audio analysis. This is bad. So we're actually just pushing all of these compiled versions. LS. All right, now we have this. And then if we want in the future, just ignore all of these, which we definitely do. Let's go back in here. Let's add a dot get ignore. And then anything in here will be ignored automatically by git. So kind of what we want to do is actually add the path to what one of those would look like. So why don't we just do this like audio analysis dash all. Because we don't really have anything else that would conflict. We have an audio analysis gem spec, but that's not with a dash. So we're going to be fine. Did get status. Uh, we did delete it. We, do, we definitely want to add these deleted things. Although we probably don't want to add this just yet. I think it doesn't even matter since we just deleted it. So let's just get add dot. Hit commit dash M. And then we'll push up to GitHub. Now if we reload, we'll have the readme. And then we also don't have all those build files which should load up a gem, which I don't want. And now that I think about it, I probably have those on my other gems. It's kind of embarrassing. Render build setup. Mm, no, I don't have them here either. I guess that was just more particular with what I was adding. That's what happens when you do git add dot. It means you add everything, all the changes, which as a programmer, a lot of times you just have like little files that you get a slight change and it, it, you didn't actually change anything. Anyways, this video has been insane. And I'm about to go and tell my users for my personal website that now they're able to find out the key and the BPM of the audio they download. Which before they were telling me they had to use two different websites to do this, to download the file and then bring it to another site just to do this. And now I built a site that does it two in one. Pretty good deal if you ask me. And now everybody, anybody else can do this. All the other sites, my competition, they're gonna start implementing this. Well, if they have a Ruby app. Which I don't think they do. I think they use JavaScript. <laughs> nah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video though. It's been fun.